Angeles. My name is Andy. I'm uh, the director of events of the Travelers Club. So the Travelers Club is a collective of people, creative people who do uh, events. We do, we write, we do music production, we uh, organize panels, workshops, and a bunch of other things. Um, it's kind of just like a, a whole cultural group is what I would say. So the whole point of it is to kind of promote culture within San Diego. Uh, I don't think there's a, any sort of one focus. It's kind of just the culmination of everything together. And then... Uh, I'm Veej. Uh, I'm not part of the Travelers Club, but I'm loosely affiliated with y'all. I um, was invited to, uh, to be part of an art show and just the rela relationship grew. And uh, I had been moving around and I finally came back to San Diego. And um, every once in a while I want to have an idea, I pitch it to Andy and um, we work on it. And this, this one kind of clicked, each one teach one. So that, that's, what we work, well, that's what we work on together. And I have a bunch of other projects that I do, like a clean slate, the swap me, and um, other freelance projects. I'm just like a full-time designer, so. So I guess for both of you guys, how long have you been active with the Travelers Club? And then, I guess, when did this relationship start also between you guys? Yeah, so to break it down even like more, like mm -hmm. me and Veej, we work together as uh, each one's each one. So, okay. so he comes from, I met him uh, loosely through this Bay Area group uh, called Youthful Kinfolk. And they essentially do a lot of the work that we do in San Diego, but in the Bay Area. So when uh, he, we both kind of, it was a weird like symbiosis. We just had the idea together differently. There was like, oh, I wanted to start doing like workshops. And I wanted to start doing a workshop series. And he had that idea. And one day he just brought it up and I was like, that's literally exactly what I want to do. Like, I want to help you out with that. Let's do it. So that's how Each One Teach One started. So Each One Teach One's a partnership program between um, we, like Youthful Kinfolk, Veej, and what I do at the Travelers Club. Um, but yeah, how did we get started? Um, I think for me it started, um, I had moved to LA when I was 19 after high school and, and after like I dropped out of college and shit and I was like, all right, I'm going to be a music journalist, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. So I went to LA and I think one of the things that I realized there was one, LA sucks, two, that all the stuff that was happening up there, uh, I couldn't find it down here. So in that capacity, it was, it, it, it was better in terms of like cultural movements and like people doing stuff. You know, you could go out, you could find a warehouse party, you could find an art show, you could find just a bunch of stuff happening all at once. And and it might have just been uh, my limitations at the time because I was younger, I was 19, I couldn't get into more places, but I felt like there was a large uh, gap in between what was considered the artistic community in San Diego at the time, back in 2011, 12, and then what, uh, what the youth were doing, you know? So I didn't know people who like were having art shows and stuff until one day I went into a, a art show called The Hostile Takeover that still goes on today, but it's thrown by different people. But back then this guy named Andre Power was doing it. And I remember I walked in for the first time when I was like 17. And since then it kind of sparked in me like, oh shit, like this is what I want to do. <laughs> so that's how I started doing it initially as the Travelers Club. Me and my friends would get together, we'd lease out like uh, warehouse spaces. And then in, in those warehouses, we would throw um, music and art showcases pretty much. And then that turned into what it is now, kind of just all snowball together. Okay, awesome. And then that's how I met Beach. Yeah. There you go. You guys seem really passionate about keeping it local to San Diego and sort of keeping sort of like a diverse culture and culture diversity into San Diego. Why is that so important to you guys? You want to answer? Um, I mean, from my perspective, like I've, I've come to learn as a, uh, cause I, I grew up traveling around. My dad was in the military. So I grew up here and then I moved away, came back. Then I went somewhere else for college and I came back. So just like gaining all those uh, different perspectives, I saw that there's there's like a world uh, outside of San Diego, right? But as a person who's like been fortunate enough to travel around, like all, all these perspectives I can bring back. So um, having like conversations with various people in the community, there's just, there's like a lot of lack of talent, like retention or like, like people feel like they need to move or like San Diego is kind of like a transplant city. It's like a growing transplant city with colleges, the military, um, now startups. So like, we kind of want to nurture like the existing community here. Like there is like creative community here that doesn't get too much shine or like they seek shine somewhere else, but uh, we have the ability, connections and all that to kind of nurture it and give them a spotlight, provide like accessibility to 
things that we can do, like provide these classes, and we can really just like empower empower these individuals uh, as a as together and separately. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, diversity. I think is a big thing. Um, I mean, when you look at San Diego in general, San Diego is considered, it, it, it's a different city depending who you ask, you know. If you ask uh, somebody from Pacific Beach, you know, the, that, that stereotypical idea of San Diego in that capacity would be white dude, surfer, bro, you know, like fucking rages and stuff. You ask, you go down the 54, you ask somebody where San Diego is, it's just like an extension of TJ, you know. You go to the San, San Ysidro, like, there's not really much of a difference between San Ysidro and TJ, but yeah. that's still San Diego. So, and if you ask somebody from like La Jolla, the, their idea of San Diego is uh, like mansions on hills and everything, you know, mm -hmm. upper class. So it's like, there's so many silos within San Diego and there's not really too much connections bridging all those places together. Mm -hmm. So we have the highest uh, refugee population uh, percentage in the whole country in San Diego, but not many people know that. Not many people know that like City Heights is like, filled to the brim with like people from like east africa like eritrea and somalia and then we have little saigon in city heights and then people don't really realize that in national city like we have like like all these things like a reason to survive as a, a art center down there mm -hmm. it's like there's just so much um there's so much communities that have so many things that are thriving within it that and i think it's so easy to find that they're that there's a huge disconnect between these communities. Yeah. So I think that's important in my uh, my missions to how can we get these communities together? Not necessarily how can we start a whole new community, but it's like, how, like there's so much happening everywhere. Why can't we all just do stuff together and use our resources and then kind of create this like melting pot, which it should be. Most definitely, yeah. you know, I totally agree. I, uh, I follow you guys on Instagram and I actually see that quite a bit. Even uh, just a couple of days ago, you had an old, old news clip about what North Park used to be. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny seeing what it is now where it's sort of like a very gentrified, sort of like hipsterous area. And it's just, I, it was very interesting to see what it used to be considered as versus what it is yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, that's the funny part about like the city. It's like, it's always constantly shifting and constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's and it's uh, it's a reality of it. As much as people want to retain the culture of certain neighborhoods and as much as they should, um, like the, the city's just rapidly changing all the time. I mean, fucking in that, in that video, um, it's like in the 1970s, North Park was considered kind of like the off the beaten path place where there was like a bunch of like older folks, you know, kind mm -hmm. of still retaining the population that was from the forties and fifties, like the yeah. older, uh, white folks. And then somewhere along the line in the eighties and nineties, it turned into like a very minority based community where it was kind of, it was like considered like the hood. Yeah. So like, if you talk to anybody who grew up in North Park in the nineties, it's like, that used to be like what people think about city heights now. Yeah. But now it's like, okay, well you go to North Park and it's like cat cafe and like, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I totally agree. So going back to each one, teach one, mm -hmm. um, you guys have the cut that coming up this summer. What exactly is Each One Teach One for people who don't know, I guess? So Each One Teach One is a summer workshop series. Um, over the course of two months, we we have uh, four courses that we in introduce to a, a student. So we have a video, uh, photo, video, audio production, um, uh, design, and we have an electives course, which is pretty much like a miscellaneous course. Uh, we used to have writing, but it ended up not being so popular. So we have, we kind of switched to it with like classes that we thought were important to learn. Um, but over the course of two months, we have, uh, we separate those four courses into two different sections. So we have on July, every Sunday, we have a photo and a video course. And then we also have, uh, I believe it's an audio course in those, in those, uh, in that month. So in August we have, um, a design and electives courses together, but essentially people could, uh, apply to classes within those courses or they could apply to the whole course or they could apply to the whole program but in itself it's uh it's kind of geared towards students uh whether they're high school college or even younger mm -hmm. um it's kind of just like giving them a way an entryway into those uh careers because it's really hard to find uh, a path inside of those you know it's, mm -hmm. it's like hard to find uh, access to it especially if you don't have the resources to get it mm -hmm. so it's free for students if you're not a student it's still only like ten dollars per class so it's it's made affordable to, to give people leeway in there. What drove you guys to create Each One Teach One? I guess both of you guys sort of to come up with the idea. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we can, there, there could be like a long-winded answer or like a <laughs> short answer, but I think whenever I get asked about Each One Teach One, I always just mention like pretty much like two things, uh, like the accessibility of it. Cause um, I, went, I went to art school and that 
it, if you don't have the resources to go to art school and you want to pursue art, you might be like discouraged to even try it. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, with the program, we try to offer entry level courses. Um, one of the things that sets it apart from, let's say, just going a traditional route, um, is that these the teachers are like people in the community, people you might have seen, like like in the DJ class, someone you might have seen DJ before, um, or with our design class, we had Dane Danner and Rodrigo, Rodrigo Calderon, and um, they they had designed some things in the community you might have seen, you might not have known who it was, who it was, but um, in the class they brought some of their uh, some of their work with them and you're like oh like I've been to this restaurant like I've looked at this menu I, I wondered who it was and come to find out it's this guy Dane Danner super cool uh, surfer dude that like just designs really cool stuff for like vans and all the restaurants here you know so it's like accessibility and just like empowering people with the uh, skills um, and the resources that we have to let them just do do what they want with it like it's after the classes it's up to them to pursue it if you're still interested, follow up with the teachers, um, or just continue to pursue that passion. Like it's really just those two things, like accessibility and empowering them. So, so each one teach one starts uh, July seventh. Uh, we still are taking obviously we're taking the students at, and applications. It's not really an application. You just go on the website, click what class you want to uh, choose. Um, if you are a student, a high school or a college student, you could DM us or email us, and we'll send you the promo code, and you could send it to all your friends, whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as you guys are committed to learning and whether you guys want to learn a skill or you guys are just interested, it's a, it's, it's an open community. There's no pressure, no nothing. You know, it's just a bunch of like-minded people who just are interested in learning new things together and growing together as a community.